What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Coming at you with another upload and yet again a perfume experience and continuing continuing with the Roger Dove Parfum theme. Today I have Fetish for you guys. Again in the 7ml um, bottle. So for everybody's reference focus okay I'm over this whole camera I think to be honest um, so what we're gonna do today is again with Raja you have to go over his musings just because they're so fun and entertaining uh, I mean I really do hope he doesn't think the way he writes because it would be funny but we're gonna go over the musing then the notes then I'm gonna share with you my experience with this perfume uh, from the beginning to date and uh, yeah, let's get going with it. So, because I got called out to not having my cafe last time, here we go, as per tradition on this channel. I always have coffee around. I'm, I'm a coffee fiend. I literally will have up to about 11 cups of coffee a day. Um, and here's, here's a tip for everybody. If you drink uh, coffee and it makes you vibrate or you get nervous or you burn out that's because one you've got bad coffee two it probably has mold on it and three it's pe the pesticides involved with your coffee beans these three things will give you the brain fog the burnout the tiredness and the jitters actual good coffee does not create that no matter how much of it you drink because your body's able to break it down and process it and you don't have to worry about any of these side effects. Taking a note, you're not uh, one of those people that is genetically oversensitive to caffeine. But just thought to share that. Uh, invest more into your coffee. Don't go for cheap coffees if you want like a good caffeine kick that does not wear out and you don't want to deal with any of the side effects that you typically get with coffees. Anyway, I digress. Let's get going with this. So, Roger Parfum's Fetish. Uh, the description, built around the leathery impulse of both labdanum and leather and underscored by whisper of animalic ambergris and musk. Fetish forms a scent that is so seductive that it tests the limits of licentiousness. This leather perfume is given a radiating heat from the spicy lashings of cardamom, cinnamon and both pink and black peppers, a sharp lime and sticky fig Lend a hidden sweetness, the most sensual of all sheafers. Fetish settles onto a dirty, earthy base of oak moss, patchouli, and vetiver, resulting in a scent of extreme strength of character and self-confidence. There you go. In terms of notes, the top notes are lemon, bergamot, and lime. The hard notes are fig, neroli, jasmine, degrass, and violet. The base notes are cardamom, elemi, pink pepper, cinnamon, pepper, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, benzoin, vanilla, labdanum, leather, ambergris, and musk. Okay, so that's it for the musing and the notes. Now, let's go into experiencing this together. Um, and I'm gonna kind of before I do that, tell you that with this particular scent, um, it wasn't love at first sniff. Uh, it grew over me with time and uh, I was really surprised to the effect it had on me because going by the ingredients, I thought I knew what I was getting into just because I knew these notes and a lot of them are my favorite notes. However, the way it's blended here, it took me a while to pick on the notes. So this one is very interesting because as of the get-go, you're not a big fan of it, but over time you're like, wow, this is mind-blowing. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and this time I'm just gonna, all right, there we go. So this was a lot and it is, Let's see if you guys are going to be able to see this, but this one right here has quite a bit of residue, if you can see, that kind of uh, 
oily, greasy residue right there. So you know that the oil content in this, even though it's an Eau de Parfum, it's pretty up there. Wow. <laughs> Holy. Woo. You know, so I'm going to tell you something. This is a freaking amazing masculine scent. Okay? I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. What put me off of it initially when I had gotten it, I think was that there is this facet in there that I still pick on, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Of kind of like celery coriander scent. And if you've ever had celery juice or celery in a salad or coriander, even like fennel, be it the fennel seed or the actual fennel, the, the vegetable, the white bulb with the green sprouts, it has a bit of that in there. And that's what was off-putting for me initially when I got it because I was like, what is this? Why does it smell like that? And uh, honestly, over time, I think once your nose gets accustomed to the scent, you start picking on the other notes and that sort of um, celery, fennel, coriander quality goes more to the back end and it's just a stunning masculine sexy scent my god like this is so and i do agree it has a bit of this dirty musky ambergris feel to it wow but god damn <laughs> see i haven't put this on for a while so i'm kind of feeling it right now a lot it's just gorgeous. It's it's very masculine. It's very um, animalic, but without the animalic facets. It's dirty. It, the, the, the right word to describe this is dirty, but it's a kind of a nice dirty. It's like a turn me on kind of dirty, if that makes any sense. Uh, and you get this freshness in there from the citrus. You get also uh, a lot of the green. It's It's... It's a green musk feel to it. So you got the patchouli, the vetiver, and you got the musk, you got the ambergris, it's, uh, you got the labdanum. Now, I will say this, in terms of leather, I mean, I can see it. It's more of a, it's not like a fresh car Napa leather scent. Uh, it's not that kind of scent, and it's not like a natural, lambskin leather jacket it's not that scent it's more of a horse saddle leather kind of a scent or a boot leather kind of a scent uh, there is a distinction between both and this is more like a cowhide leather scent it feels more mature more subtle toned down versus let's say the lambskin which is napa leather um don't quote me on that i think it is uh, the lamb skin tends to be more sort of in your face, vibrant, um, like you really, really know it's like young leather, soft leather. This is more like on a mature kind of patinaed, patinaed or a leather that has developed a patina sort of vibe to it. So it's very interesting how it's, uh, it's captured here. Now, in terms of other notes. So you definitely get lemon, bergamot, lime, fig. I'll be honest with you. I eat a lot of figs, but most of the figs I eat uh, in North America tend not to have an odor to them. Now I've had figs in the Mediterranean and they definitely have a scent to them. They have a floral to fruity scent, which I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I'm picking on it here or not. My brain could probably be looking so hard for it that it's interpreting certain notes here as fig, but I can't say with certainty that I pick here on fig. Uh, Neroli, Jasmine de Graz, I'm, I'm not too sure. Violet, that's interesting because I don't pick on any purple notes here. Violet is a purple flower, technically, it's a violet. Uh, and I know what violet florals smell like, and I can't pick on that here. Cardamom, yes. 
Elami, not too sure, pink pepper, cinnamon pepper. Yes, so there's this peppery, spicy quality in here for sure. Patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, yes. Benzoin, yes. Labdanum, yes. The leather is there. Ambergris musk, yes. Vanilla. I can't really pick on it, but I can see that it could be there just because there is this, as I mentioned, a green musky warm feel to this. Generally speaking, green masculine scents tend to be um, on the colder side. This is a green, warm, musky scent. So the vanilla would accentuate the warmth and the muskiness by adding a little bit of that sort of gourmandish slash tropical uh, hint in there. It's very subtle, but it would definitely enhance the muskiness, the freshness of the ambergris, as well as just overall add a bit of, uh, add a touch of warmth to the scent. Now, with respect to uh, how you would wear this, I would say that this is a scent for all occasions. It's, uh, I'd say, it's not exactly traditionally masculine green scent, but it's close to that. Uh, and the reason I say it's not exactly is because of the warm, dirty tone to it. However, I'll say you can definitely wear this in formal settings and casual settings. It'll be fine. It won't be offensive at all. Uh, if anything, it smells really, really great. The one thing I will say is that if your body is naturally musky in its chemistry, <laughs> this is a bit musky uh, in terms of how it uh, projects and carries itself. So maybe use less sprays if you've got more of a musky body quality to your chemistry versus if you're kind of neutral or not that musky like yours truly, then you should be fine spraying as many sprays as you need. But you can wear it in casual formal settings. In terms of uh, seasonality, I would say from my own experience using with my own skin, this is a great summer scent. It comes to shine in the summer. I've tried it in cold weather during spring, fall and winter. It's good, it's there, but it's not the same as in summer. I'm not really sure why, Probably it's a function of the musk and the ambergris and the citrus in there. But I found out that in summer heat, it actually does very, very good. And even though it does have musk in it, have musk-like qualities, it does not tend to become overbearing or suffocating uh, like a lot of the other musk scents I've experienced. It actually performs really well and it just does gorgeously during the summer. Now, is this a morning or an evening scent. I mean, I've worn it both. Uh, it works for both. My preference is morning. Uh, I like this more in the morning than in the evening. Just personal preference, but it would work uh, during you know the different times through the day. With respect to performance, uh, in terms of projection, again, if you spray a lot of it, it's gonna project far. Uh, however, I literally put only one spray or two and it tends to be more of a skin scent or a vicinity scent, meaning that I have this little scent cloud around me at the most in terms of projection and for people to pick on it, they need to enter within my vicinity, within my little cloud and territory to be able to pick on it. Now, with respect to Trail and silage. Will you leave trail again? If you spray a lot, yes, you'll leave a trail. If not, your trail is going to be very close to your close proximity, vicinity sort of trail. Uh, with respect to silage, again, its silage is going to linger around where you are uh, momentarily, right? So if you move, I don't know, you're standing here, there's going to be silage momentarily after you leave to here, but it's it kind of disappears and then you create a new silage in the new spot. That makes any sense. Uh, so yeah, I mean, performance wise, it's good. I mean, it's not overbearing. It does not protrude on other people's airspace and suffocate them. It's just the right balance of uh, performance in, ter in terms of projection trail and silage. Now, this was a blind buy. Uh, as with a lot of my perfumes because you can't really get this where I live uh, I, I 
think at the time when I bought it, there was no samples I could get online. So I ended up going for the 7ml prior to sort of committing to a bigger bottle. But would you like this? Yes, blind buy it, go for it. If you like green, warm, musky scents, okay? If that's your vibe, uh, go for it. You will not regret it. Be cautioned though that that scent uh, takes a bit of time for you to really appreciate it. Uh, it has this almost artisanal quality to it where it's blended so well that you can't really pick on a lot of the notes unless you're familiar with them. And even then, even though you're familiar, it takes some time to pick on them. So this one, fantastic, highly recommend for a warm, masculine, green, musky scent. Uh, I'm actually, once this is done, I'll be definitely investing in a full bottle. That's how much I like this scent. And it's very versatile. You can wear it anywhere, anytime. And uh, I've gotten compliments on it, surprisingly. I don't really get compliments on a lot of green scents, but with this one, it was a compliment getter. Not a consistent compliment getter, but nonetheless, got me quite a bit of compliments. So. Raja, Parfa, Raja Dove Parfum Fetish. Get your nose on it, get your wallet on it, blind buy it, you won't regret it, you're gonna love it. Fantastic composition, highly recommend. With that said, that's it for today's iteration of Perfume Experience. Again, as per usual, really, really appreciate your time and attention and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.